So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and I know we've had a little bit of a hiatus from our Microsoft series on the M1 MacBook Air, but today we got episode 4 which we're going to go over Microsoft PowerPoint and how well it runs on these new M1 machines because again a lot of people need the Microsoft suite to work and work really well, especially if they're on the Mac side, right? Because a lot of people know that Microsoft doesn't usually play well with Mac, but we're living in a world where Microsoft is trying to make that happen for Apple users. So without further ado, let's figure out how well Microsoft PowerPoint works on the M1 MacBook Air. So hopefully everybody can see my screen pretty well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much just gonna go through Microsoft PowerPoint on the M1 MacBook and show you that it runs extremely well. There's no need to worry and think about, hey, should I go M1 if I'm a Microsoft user? Should I stick with an Intel computer? You know, I really wanna get the M1, but I don't know if it's gonna work. And that's what this video is for. I want this video to show everybody that, hey, it's possible to run your, your entire Microsoft suite. And today we're gonna go over Microsoft PowerPoint. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna open it up. So you guys saw how quickly that did open up, right? So just real quick, I'm gonna Apple quit. So you can see it's not there anymore. We'll open it up. In less than a second, the entire thing opens up. And comparing that to my older i5 Intel-based MacBook Air that was still from 2020, this is by far way faster. That used to take five to 10 seconds to just load up and open, right? So we're gonna do just a classic blank one right now and see exactly what our options are, how quickly everything runs, right? So for instance, you already have design ideas popping up on the right-hand side, even ones that are actively moving. So you can see that everything works very well. I'm moving it around, no hiccups, no nothing and it just works extremely well. And then another thing that I wanna show you is if we pop right back into Microsoft PowerPoint, that you have full access to your Microsoft OneDrive. So you can see that these are all different types of PowerPoint presentations that I've saved on my Microsoft OneDrive. So let's pick, actually let's go into a normal one, let's go into a new gallery one. So we have a previous slide here. So this is gonna be our test. Don't forget to sub to the channel. Really helps kinda of put these videos in front of more people. So as you can see, that's working beautifully. And then what I wanna do is maybe add an image, right? So if I wanna add, let's say, a thumbnail for a video that's coming soon, right? You can see now that I'm able to get background ideas and automated design ideas. So automatically on the, on the right-hand side, you see my design ideas pop up. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So then you can see that the design ideas kind of retouch itself up. And then you can see that I can start using these ideas and make it seem as if I am a Microsoft PowerPoint wizard, which I am not. So this is a great thing to have. It's on the iPad Pro as well, it's on Microsoft, but I wanted you guys to know that this does happen and it works well on the M1 side. And you can just do whatever you need to in order to really customize however you see fit. And thumbs up for the thumbnail, because this one's gonna be a fun one when it, when it drops. But if I wanna just undo everything, right? We'll get the picture out of there, we'll delete that picture. Everything works exactly how it should work and exactly how it's expected to work. So on the top, you have all your normal toolbar functionality, right? You have your home, which allows you to do all your text editing and things like that. So anything that you would want, right? You can add a new slide, change the layout on here, which is beautiful to see. You can reset things, add a section, change the font just as you would any other way. You can convert things into smart art. So maybe if I highlight this, convert it into smart art, press one of these, boom. All of a sudden I have a smart art. Control Z to get out of there. So, so, so far I'm illustrating that a lot of it is similar. Your shortcuts work as they should. I, I just use Command Z to undo all that. And if we continue on, it's just the same old Microsoft PowerPoint. You can add a picture from browser, from a file, add different shapes, text box, you know, add an arrow if I want to, that points to something else. But again, Apple Z, undo that. So I'm back to my home page. And this is again, the main page that you wanna start off your PowerPoint presentations in. And again, if I wanna add any new slides, let's add a new one. Go into here, let's change, up, let's change the layout a little bit of this one, right, because I want to add a picture next to some text. I'll grab this image from before, slide it in, fits in perfectly there. Don't forget the latest video. So boom, it's working just as it should, right? And then I'm gonna keep going through the different toolbars. So here you can insert anything that you would see fit, shapes, icons, 3D models, you can add charts in here, you can import charts from Excel, which is a beautiful thing, add your word art, and then another cool thing to do is that you can add video and then also add audio. So audio is a big thing that people have been asking for a lot. 
So audio is a capability that you can add into a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. So it acts as if it should be in there, right? So you can add audio from a browser, add from a file, or you can even record live audio as you're doing your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation and getting it ready to go. And then same thing with video. You can do movie from browser, movie from file, and then online movie. So you can't actively record video, but you can actively record audio for your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, which count the number of times I'm saying Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, please. And then if we continue on, you do have the ability to draw on here. So this, this ability is a little bit better highlighted on the iPad Pro because there's a touch screen and you can physically use the Apple Pencil. But for this one, it works the same way. But instead of using an Apple Pencil, you're using your mouse. So I just clicked on the dot right there and now I can just draw whatever I want. Again, Apple Z to undo. I can say, don't, if I can even write that, don't forget. And you guys already know what I'm gonna say, to subscribe. So undo all that. And the one thing I do want to see is if I do draw something and I want to move it, I can now grab it and move it around. And what's nice is I can actually click on this and turn it into a circle. So that's a little smart art. So basically when you draw anything with your mouse or with a pen, quote unquote, and it's something, it's a shape that you want it to be, it'll automatically detect, hey, that kind of sort of looked like a circle. I think that's what you're going for. Let me turn it into that. And if you don't want it, Apple Z and undo. And again, you can do the same thing with highlighters. So you can highlight things, you can add different pens, ink to text, which is nice, or ink to shape, which is something that I was highlighting before. So if I do a square, even though it's not perfect, I'll just grab my lasso right here, do one of these, press ink to shape, and all of a sudden I have a perfect rectangle. And then if we continue on with, these are the different designs and the different layouts that we've seen, right? So if I go back here, it'll generate new test ideas, new design ideas to make you look even that much smarter when you're presenting a PowerPoint. You can add your transitions, your animations. So PowerPoint is a full version of PowerPoint on the M1 and I'm very, very happy that Microsoft kind of swallowed their pride and realized how many people use their Microsoft suite of products on Apple computers, because they had to have known. And then the last thing that I do want to show you is the slideshow section, because they've added a couple extra ones and they added it to the iPad, they added it to the Windows side and the Mac OS side. So what you can do is obviously you have your normal options, so you can do your presenter view, which is nice, it's all right here. Just escape from there. You can do custom view, so you can add custom slideshows in here. And then another thing is you can actually rehearse your timing and also record a slideshow. So if you wanna rehearse kind of, so let's say the situation is you're rehearsing to make sure that every single slide is timed out perfectly in terms of how, how much you're speaking during each slide. So that's what this rehearse timing really is for, right? So I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna turn off a bunch of stuff, but if I get out of there, I do not wanna save that new slide timing, but that's the gist of it. So basically you can time yourself on each slide and then time your entire presentation to make sure that you know, you're not wasting anybody's time or you're as, as efficient as possible with the time allotted to you to make your presentation. And then lastly, this is the review section, which is more, more collaborative. So whenever you actually share it on this top right section, you share it with somebody within your organization or share the link to anybody out there. This is where all of your collaboration and review section stuff comes in. So you can add new comments, check accessibility, show all the comments, allow people to be in read only or in edit only mode. So those are all the things. And then the last one has to be the view. So you can outline the view, whichever way you wanna view everything, which is, I like the classic view right here, of course. But that's pretty much the entirety of Microsoft PowerPoint on the M1 MacBook SOC. And so far it works amazingly. Like I said, it opens up very quickly. There's no hiccuping, all the features that I would ever use are on here and then some. And Microsoft seems to be really taking advantage of how strong these M1 chips are because they've worked and they've been optimized perfectly. So that's gonna do it for this view. Let's go back to the normal view. So as everybody saw, Microsoft PowerPoint works extremely well. It's one of those applications that's already been converted into an M1 SOC application, which means you don't need to download an Intel version and then go through Rosetta. It goes automatically through the M1 chip and runs just exactly as it should run for the M1 Max. So that's what I love about Microsoft. They're slowly making that transition of all their applications. They've already done all their main applications and we're gonna touch on Microsoft Word and Excel next on this series uh, to really dive in and see exactly how well they work. But overall, Microsoft PowerPoint works extremely well. It works really well with OneDrive. If you're in the Microsoft ecosystem already and you're just using an M1 Mac, then it should work perfectly as long as you just sign in with your corresponding login and you should be good to go. And then in terms of features and functionality, 
You guys saw, most of it is there, if not everything. I could not notice anything missing, comparing it to a Windows version of PowerPoint, or maybe an iPad Pro version of PowerPoint. Everything is just very seamless and it works together, and if you know how to run it on one machine, then you'll know how to run it on this guy. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, let me know what your favorite Microsoft application is, or what your most used Microsoft application is. Maybe aside from Outlook, because I'm sure everybody uses Outlook if they're in the Microsoft world. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, peace. Thank you.